how are you going? Today we're going to be reacting to my parents locked me up in a basement because I was a bad girl. Um, <laughs> this sounds kind of weird, you know, like, I've been a bad girl, you locked me in the basement. Well, let, let, let's just watch it, alright? Hello, I'm Anne, and I was adopted at the age of 13 because my parents were abusive, and I didn't realize it. You see, my parents were pretty weird. They it's would just got literally deep. lock me up in our basement if I did something wrong. Basically, if I- That's one way to discipline your kid. Bad in the basement. I wouldn't even do that to my dog. I would break something or go to bed too late or even talk too loudly. They would send me to the basement, never really explaining what I did wrong. I would sit <laughs> there so in the darkness. Up. The only light how coming know how long she got locked from in for. a small window that I couldn't reach. When I was six or eight, I didn't really understand what was happening. The only thing I had when I was down there was my imagination. I even had an imaginary friend. I used to so sad. This one's so morbid already. To talk with him, but then my parents said I couldn't do that either. Yeah. How do you stop? As I got an older, friend? like around twelve, I wasn't sent to the basement as often when I was a kid. Instead, my parents created a strike system. If I did three wrong things, then I would be sent to the basement. It was only then that I started to really see <coughs> how my parents were talking to each other. Or, more accurately, weren't talking to each other. They were just sitting silently, never saying a word to each other. Even if they did, it was my mom who was shouting. And dad who was ignoring her. I don't know why people like this don't just separate. Like, why stay together? Is it a financial thing? Like, what? Look at that butt chin, though. I'm more strict, too. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere after school. And I wasn't allowed to talk to boys. Okay, this is so I had so to sit in my morbid. room after school and be extremely quiet. They didn't really care about my life. If I had adequate grades, it was enough for them. I saw how other teenagers were at school. They were all talking to each other and laughing. And I couldn't because I was afraid of my parents. They forbade me to tell anyone anything about our family, saying that family matters should stay in the family. The only That's person still like I a very was used a term. boy named James. I tried to avoid him because I wasn't allowed to talk with boys. But he was persistent. He also came from a bad family, so we had something to talk about. He would tell me how horrible his life at home was, and I started to understand that mine wasn't any better. Oh. What was so crazy was that I didn't even understand that it was bad. The an these animations are so simple, yet so good. When I was 13, my parents locked me up again, and I realized that I was tall enough to open that window. Because Hell yeah, let's escape. I wanted to change something, and this was my small chance to do it. I crawled out of the window and just walked around the block. I was so happy that I found a way to avoid sitting in the dark basement. It was the best moment of my life back then. I was back by the time my punishment was supposed to end, and nobody noticed anything. So I started doing it regularly. Sometimes James would come over and we would walk together for an hour. His parents Aww. didn't care where he was. This continued for a month, but then James disappeared. I guess his parents moved away and I couldn't reach out to him because I okay, had that's restricted really access upsetting. to social media. This chick is like having... Mm. I continue so guys, real quick, I have a fun challenge that only takes five seconds to complete. If you leave a like and subscribe to this video in the next five seconds, you receive 10 years of amazing luck. And I mean, who doesn't want 10 years of amazing luck? Cause I do. You have to do it alone. But one day, my parents caught me. I crawled back in and saw my father standing in the middle of the basement in the dark. That's when you leg it. I was so scared and I tried to say something, but nothing came out. He took me to my mother and they both told me to get out of their house. They said, if you want to live like a homeless person, go and be homeless. I begged them not to throw me out, but they didn't listen to a word I- I don't get why some people have kids. Is this so messed up? Is it going to get worse? He said, 
I was in tears, and this was rare because I didn't cry much. I was just too accustomed to my life being like this. But what happened that day, it was a bit much, even for me. Now I realize that they just wanted to scare me and they weren't really throwing me out. But back then, it was scary, yeah. I didn't know where to go, so I went straight to school. It was the only other place I really knew, to be honest. It was nice is, I want, is locking your kid in a basement as a punishment, like, this is bad, but, like, is it so really? I trying to be as invisible as possible. Wait, would they rehome a kid possible. for that? School was closed at night, of course, so I had to wait the entire night there. I hid behind one bush and tried to sleep, but it didn't work. I was too worried and scared. I guess my parents didn't expect me to really go somewhere and not just wait for them to change their minds in the front yard. But I didn't have a phone, so they couldn't call. And they probably didn't even try. After a very long and cold night, our school security guard came to open the school. He noticed me lying <coughs> in the bushes and walked over to me with a flashlight and asked angrily, What are you doing here? I said, I'm sorry, please. I don't have anywhere else to go. He immediately took me to his office, gave me this tea is so and morbid. he could find. He watched me drink the tea and eat, and then asked what happened. I said I couldn't tell him, but he said I had to tell him. So I said that I had a fight with my parents and they made me leave home. He didn't know what to say, but continued to talk with me about different topics, like about school and my friends. Just well, to calm like, me trust down. the old security guard. But it was clear by my answers that I wasn't all right. As soon as the principal arrived, the guard took me to him and he continued to ask me questions. As I found out later, my parents would act normal when they would come into my school. And basically, they said that I had a learning disability and that was the reason I was so quiet. He was shocked to hear the truth. Oh my god, these parents are nutty. Next, I was taken to our school counselor, and I talked with him for what seemed like hours. I was very hesitant to answer his questions at first, but I was slowly opening up and telling him my story bit by bit. He asked me to go home and act like everything was normal. I returned home, and my parents acted like nothing happened. After a few days... People from child services came to my house and started their own investigation. Oh, my snap. My parents were mad. They were screaming and trying to intimidate the social workers. I had never seen so much anger from my parents. Usually it was just coldness. <laughs> they ended up taking me away from my parents. And the same security guard that helped me took me into his house for a couple of days. He had a wife and two teenage boys that were older than me. They were Aww, rich a little bit anything, sweet. but they were nice. I felt so uncomfortable that I was allowed to talk and, well, just be normal. I couldn't trust him back then because he didn't act like my parents. He, his wife, and his sons were so good to me. My parents tried to come to school and take me away, but, well, the security guard wouldn't let them. <laughs> they desperately tried to get me back. What I don't understand is when, like, abusive parents still want their kid. Like, why? Why? And because they missed me. It was because they didn't want to face repercussions for years of abusing me. After several months, maybe even close to a year, I was adopted by this family. I still remember how I stood with them in court, and I couldn't believe what was happening. Oh, they adopted I remember how all of us went to a pizza place to celebrate. I was so, so happy, but also at the same time, I didn't believe it. I asked them why they took me in. They smiled and said, because you're a good girl, Anne. And that was it. I still try to find James, sad. and I hope he was as lucky as I was. But now, I'm Damn, they just really happy that <laughs> I was surrounded away. by good people all along. And as soon as they found out about my problems, they helped without hesitation. That's so sweet when families, Please. like even especially when you've already got like a bunch of kids to like take on another kid. Oh, that one was so sad, guys. The animations are sick. Let's just look at the positives. But that one was quite quite emotional i faced the whole thing's probably like <laughs> oh my 
okay well guys that is the end of the video that one was a bit of a sad one and i'll see well i had a good ending i guess and i will see you in the next video like normal bye